So uh, let's get to, we're going to turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Even though I have a working title for this study this morning, uh, I think, team, when we post it on YouTube, I think I want the title to be, uh, I Don't Agree With God. Okay? Have you never, have you ever, this is not a trick question, it's a real question, and I know you'd be afraid to answer it. Do you ever look at what God's Word says and say, I, I don't like that, and I don't agree with it? <laughs> We're going to be talking about that because I'm going to tell you something about that uh, this morning. Anyway, let's read James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fighting, uh, fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this morning, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your presence would truly be here. We would hear something that we've never heard before. We would be moved like we've never been moved before. We would be encouraged, corrected, guided, hugged, whatever you know we need. But at the end, let us come forth closer to you, uh, maybe not always understanding you, but trusting you nonetheless. Bless this message this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is part 14 in our study in the book of James. Like I said, going through a, a book verse by verse, it's interesting for me uh, to do on a morning service because I, you know, whatever next week is, it's the next scripture. And, it's, you know, it's like, oh boy, that's going to be tough to talk about. But by faith, just you just teach it. We're just going to teach it. We're just going to preach it. And you guys decide what you're going to do with it. Uh, but we're going to enter into chapter 4 of James, and this is going to be part A, meaning there's a lot going on here. And this morning we're going to discuss a problem. So this is going to be like, what's the issue? Next week we're going to give you the solution, or I should say God will give you the solution. So it's kind of going to kind of be, going to kind of be, it sounds strange, a cliffhanger. I uh, want you guys to chew on it. I want you guys to think about it. Um, and the title that I have in the bulletin here is, Where is all of this coming from? Okay. If you've watched the world today, you looked at your life, and, and you thought like, gee, I never remember things being so hard. I never remember things being so weird and confusing. And, and you say to yourself, as you look at the world, and you say to yourself as you look in the mirror, where is this coming from? Where is this all coming from? Where is it going? Simply, what is going on with me? What's going on in our world? And like I said in the introduction there, uh, teaching through the book of James, you know, somebody's got to let me in the book of James. Boy, it is a brutal book. I never realized how brutal it is. And today is, is going to be very brutal. And I warn you guys in advance that this is a heavy, heavy, contemplative word where you're going to go, hmm, I don't know if I agree with that. And that leads me to a shocker, people, because I was thinking about it. I never really thought about this. You guys know how I feel about truth. I, I, I think I, I have emphasized it and I have put myself out there and I'm not afraid to say when I'm wrong, when I made bad choices or whatever. I tell you it like it is. And as God has been dealing in my life, well, I got a shocker for you today. I don't always agree with God's word. Now that might sound strange. Say, like, oh, how can he be a pastor and not agree with God's word? Well, the truth is, sometimes I want to do what I want to do. And I don't like what God says about what I want to do. And that's just being honest with you. Okay? I'm just being brutally honest. And as I was saying that, so that's going to be rough to say to the people. And I don't always agree with God's word. But it made me think, and I would like to think God immediately gave me this rebuttal here. 
I don't always like getting tickets from police officers either, but we need them to keep law and order in the land, mm -hmm. right? I don't have to agree with something, but I have to obey it because it is good for me, right? Remember when you were a kid and you know, you know I want ice cream for breakfast and your mom and dad says, no, you don't have to, but why? You don't have to agree with it. You have to trust that what they say is right, even if you don't like it, right? So it isn't that bizarre to say, I don't always agree with God's word. I don't have to agree with it because I'm not God, but I do have to obey it. That's where faith comes in because it does matter what God says. And I tell you what does not matter. It does not matter what you and I think about it. It doesn't matter. What matters is we obey what it says. Because without that, there'll be no harmony, there'll be no peace in your life, there'll be no peace in this world. And I'm going to give you a bunch of examples. Like, And again, I'm going to point this towards me. If you're like me, I don't know if you are. I would assume maybe some of you are like me. I have a lot of questions in this thing called life. I don't have it all figured out. I don't know everything about God. I have questions about our world, especially where it is today, about our families, our problems, our lives, the things that come up that, wow, I didn't see that coming. And it's time, people, that we start to really ask questions. God designed us to ask questions. If, if not so, he wouldn't say all through the Bible, seek me. Because you're seeking something to get answers to the problems. But the thing is, we need to start asking the right questions. Because we can ask the wrong questions. We need to ask the good ones. And look at them from a biblical perspective. A biblical microscope. Which is what we're going to do today. And this is where we're going to head again with the question... As you look at all your life, and I know a lot of you people have been hit with some really hard things, those who are listening online, you know, I'm sure, is there anybody you know who has not gone through hard things? You ever see, well, that person's life has just been, every single day, it's been wonderful since the day they were born. I don't know anybody like that. And if you see someone who's trying to portray themselves like that, they're lying. Okay? Their life looks so good on Facebook. Is it? <laughs> you know, every time I see them, they're smiling, the kids are laughing, they run, it's, it's like, you remember those old Coca-Cola commercials, you know, they're running, playing Frisbee, and their beach life, and everything, and as Jerry Seinfeld says, you know, I drink the same soda, I never see that, <laughs> my life, drink Coke, <sighs> flying around, Frisbees, vacations, jet ski, and all this stuff, I just get up and go to work, you know, it's all a lie, people, it's rough out rough and we begin to ask these questions the early church asked questions just like us and they also raise complaints I mean how many if you're honest you ever complain to God man I complain to God a lot but I also draw a lot of wrong conclusions If I was to ask you guys today, I bet many of you, if I asked you, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to ask your opinion about what's going on in the world. What do you think? Right? What's your opinion? You know what we really like? I'm going to ask you your opinion about Bob and Sue down the road. What do you think about that? We probably have a lot if, you, if we know these people. Oh, I have, I'll give you my opinion. I'll tell you what I think about what's going on. And again, we all draw conclusions that, how many times have you drawn a conclusion about something that you've been completely wrong about? How about this? Have you ever, and I know it's true, <clears throat> have you ever said, God, if you would just do this, I would be so happy. If you would just smack so-and-so around a little bit for me, <laughs> make me very happy because they need to be smacked around. I'll give you a list of people you can smack around for. Me. God, if you just give me those numbers to lotto, I'll never bother you again. My life would be fine. So all I want. So can we do that? 
God, you just find me Mr. or Mrs. Wright. That's all I ask. I will be very happy and I won't bother you again. God, if you would just put in the White House, who I think <laughs> should be in the White House, turn the whole world around. So you could, you could, you could ask me my opinion. Okay? And I'll tell you what I think. But the bigger question is, what does God say about these things? Well, James 4.1 gives us some uncomfortable conclusions about a lot of things. So we're going to read the verses, James 4, we're going to begin in verse 1. I'm going to read the King James, then New Living Translation. So James chapter 4, verse 1, it says, From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and ye have not. Ye kill and ye desire to have, and ye cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, <clears throat> because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you might consume it upon your lusts. You adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity with God? Whosoever will be a friend of this world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture says in vain that the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So, it's kind of a lot of heavy things going on there. And... Like I started, I think a lot of us can say, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I really agree with all that. I don't know if I understand it. Uh, maybe God's wrong on this one. But let's, let's read it again. Now we're going to read it in the New Living Translation, verse 1. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Isn't it the whole army of evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have. You scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous for what others have and you can't possess it. So you fight and you quarrel to take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your whole motive is wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers and adulteresses, don't you realize that friendship with this world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy this world, you can't be a friend of God. What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the Holy Spirit, whom God has placed within us, jealously longs for us to be faithful? He gives us more and more strength to stand against such evil desires. As the scripture says, God sets himself against the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Now you might say, well, okay, well, I guess I understand what that means, but I don't understand what it does for me. What am I supposed to do with those words? You say, okay, uh, I, I heard it, but I don't know. And this is where you can say, I don't know if I agree with God, or maybe I'm missing something. Have you ever watched like a movie and you're watching it, and you you like halfway through, and you go to whatever who's ever watched the movie with you, you go, who is that person? Like, I don't get this. So Joe is killing that girl because she has, you know, and you feel like you're the stupidest person in the movie theater because I I'm not following this movie. Who are these characters? Do you ever do that of your own life? So God, like, what the heck is going on in my life? Why did I run into that person today? What was that all about, right? So people, our mission for today, and hopefully this gets you excited, is let's answer some of these questions. Let's try to get through some of this confusion that we face, face all, every day about this thing called life, as Prince once said. 
or the artist formerly known as Prince, right? <laughs> See, he was ahead of his time, Prince. He already had to think about identifying who he was. He didn't know. He was a symbol. Remember that? He changed his name to a symbol. So I want to just throw this out there today. What if? It's a great thing, what if, right? Isn't our whole life about what if? We always throw that down. What if our problem is not understanding what God is trying to say and, and we are one morsel away of a completely different life if we just get something right, right? What if we are all really missing something? What if, I mean, can you go to church your whole life? Can you study the Bible your whole life and still not get it? Yeah, it's called religion, okay? There's millions of people going to church every day they have no idea anything about God, anything about this life, anything about the past, anything about the future. And some of it is us. So let's, let's go through this and dig, dig deep. And unfortunately, a lot of the digging is going to be digging into us. And we don't like people to dig into us because we don't want them to see what we already know that lives in there. So, verse 1, and we'll go back to the New Living again, of James chapter 4. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Anybody deal with quarrels and fights? Oh, yeah, every day is beautiful, no quarrels and fights. Isn't it the whole army of evil desires at war within you? And that's a part we say, well, I don't know if I agree with that. But last, if you have a chance, last Sunday night, the title was, What Do You Really Want? And, and I was really happy with how that turned out because it was a really good question because I asked the people that night, and if you get a chance to listen to that evening service, the question is, what do you really want? Isn't it a strange question? You, oh, please ask me. I'll tell you what I really want. But as I've been searching for what I really want, I really don't know if it's what I need. I am confused now more than ever of what I want from life. And we found that we could make the biggest mistake in our lives for wanting the wrong things, right? But anyway... Verse 1 speaks of this war within us. I always said, you ever wonder why you're so exhausted? Because you are fighting an eternal battle every single day. From the morning you get up to the time you go to bed, think upon how many things have gone through your mind. How many random thoughts are flying around in there. And what really is flying around in there? Well, what we really want in life. Verse 1 again. What is causing the quarrel of the fights among you? Isn't it the whole army of evil desires at war within you? Again, speaking honestly and truthfully, people. I don't know about you guys, but I know about me. Because every day, I have this conversation with myself. Every single day. And you know what? There is an army of voices in my head fighting all day long. And what are they constantly fighting about? I'm arguing with myself. <coughs> Excuse me. Arguing with God, the Holy Spirit. It's probably what the real argument is with. And the question is more than ever... What do I really want? What do I really want? What really makes me happy? I thought I always knew, you know, when I was five years old, it was easy. Uh, ice cream and lollipops, I guess. Get a little older, it changes. It's, isn't it funny, the older you get, the more expensive those things become? Mm -hmm. Right? As a little kid, my mom could buy me a little Hot Wheels. Now I want a real car, you know? <laughs> Price went up a little bit. It's a little bit more expensive to keep me happy. What do I really want to make me happy? Because we start to become afraid because we've been trying to fill that cup, so to speak, my proverbial cup with different things, and it's not really cutting it. 
This is scaring me. But the real question we have to ask is, what is the truth? What is the truth? Because I know at the end of my day, all I'm left with is smoke coming out of my ears. And no solution, no conclusion to my dilemma. And why? Because maybe I don't like what God is saying. Which brings us to point two. In verse 2, let's go to verse 2. Very interesting scriptures here. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get. You are jealous for what others have, and you can't possess it, so you fight and quarrel to take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And again, as I was reading this, I go, you know what? I think God knows a little thing, a little thing or two about what's going on in my mind. I'm finally getting because this is my battle. Or maybe it's just me, people. Maybe I am just one nutty person. Because, check this out, I was really thinking about this. I know what I want, but at the same time, I have no peace in wanting it. Have you ever been through that? I know if I just had this pen, that's what I want, but I don't have peace with that want. And that's, it's tormenting. Gee, I, I know I want it, but why is it giving me peace about wanting it? I know what I want. I've shared it with you guys a million times. I know I want to be happy. I want things to go my way. Let's be honest. That's what we want. I want a farm. I don't think that's coming, you know? I don't want any pain. I don't want any sickness. I want my children to all be saved, serving the Lord, lives all doing well. That's what I want. Not to mention that 1997 Land Rover Defender 9 <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. If you guys just want to get together and poor pastor, he really needs this thing, you know? I want a successful church. I want loyal people passionate about serving here. And you know what? Sometimes you really get silly. The other day I told my wife, I said, I just had a strange thought. I said, you know what I want? If I could have anything, I want to be the personal spiritual advisor to the president. Oh, goodness. I want to be the president's pastor. Because I got some things I want to say. Okay? And that means whatever president is there. Whoever becomes president, I would love that job. My wife's laughing. I say, you think it's impossible? Maybe they might call me. They might hear, because I'm so cool. And they might ask me. Pastor heard about you. The president heard about you out of all the millions of pastors, and he wants you to come live with him in the White House and guide his every move. But the problem is, people, isn't this, isn't this true? You know, there's something, I mean, something's going on with YouTube people. I, I'm yeah. living vicariously through YouTube. Really. Because you, you ever have all these people, these vlogs, these people's lives that you follow? And millions of people follow them. Mary and Joe, they live on a farm and they're, and they're preppers or they're whatever they are. And I'm following these people and going, man, I want to have their life. <laughs> man. And me and my wife, we compare, well, I'm following these people. I'm following these people. We're following all these people's lives. They're living what we think, that's what I want. And we live that big word, big word for today. You know how I like big, big words, vicariously, through their happiness. Because why am I watching all these things? Because they're happy, and <clears throat> I'm really not so happy, but I'll take a little bit what they got, and I'll live through them. Anybody else do that? Anybody? Or just me, because I'm, maybe I'm just really losing it. <laughs> I think I get mad that I see people have what I want, and I can't have it. And you know what? I burn inside. 
No matter what, you know why I do? Because no matter what I do, no matter what I say, all of these things that I really desire seem just out of reach. Impossible. Isn't it a tormenting thing? You know, they say it's a, it's a horrible thing to do to your cats. We did it once, we never do it again. Uh, we hung them by their tails, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I really get in trouble. Don't hang cats by their tails. Uh, you know, you get those laser pointers, mm -hmm. And you shine them on the ground, and we did it for like two seconds, and it broke my heart because the poor cat wanted something it could never get. They're like <laughs> following this thing, and, and I watch people like do it for hours, and I said, I can't do that, that's horrible. Sometimes I feel like Satan has a laser pointer. He's just like, oh. I'm like, <laughs> you're never gonna get it. Makes me frustrated, doesn't it? Make you frustrated? It's so out of reach. Though. Gee, their life is so much better than my life. And you know what's the problem is, you know, where there's war, there's battle, and I end up bitter. You guys, there's no bitter people here, I know, but uh, angry, there's no angry people here. It's pretty cool. Uh, and it makes me disappointed a lot. And I'm just being honest. But let's continue on and see what James 4 else has to say. So let's read that verse 2 again. It's very interesting. You want and you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. That doesn't mean I'm killing people, but you kill other people's ideas or things in your life. Whatever you have to, like, if you work in the corporate world or any world, any job, have you noticed what people will do to get your position? Oh, yeah. Do you know what people will do to slander you so they can be look good with the boss? Aren't we doing that all the time? I spent my whole life when I was in the union, man, when that job I had, man, I realized that was a real brown nosing piece of garbage. And I really wanted to get, and, and it worked. Got really in and up. Didn't feel too good about myself. You are Jealous for what others have, and you can't possess it. You know, it's, it's funny, people, and it's, it's such a shame. And, and if I, I, I've been begging you guys for years. It's like people come and people go because they don't like this question. But if you're honest, say it. You're jealous of other people. Because how many people would never say that? I'm not jealous of anybody. Completely content with what I have, and I don't want nothing else. I think you're a liar. Well, maybe you, you, maybe you're better. Maybe you, you guys are a lot better than me. Because man, I've been jealous for a lot of things. You are jealous from what others have, and you can't possess it. Do you know what jealousy is? Right? Isn't it one of the commandments? Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's stuff. You know why it's so bad? Did you ever look at it this way? When your neighbor has something that you don't have. Do you know what jealousy really is? You're really saying, I'm mad that they have it. They don't deserve it, I do. That's what jealousy really is. They don't deserve that, I deserve it. And I'm ticked off that they got it and I don't. So you fight and you quarrel to take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. And you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I found a mistake in the Bible right here. Because this is not true, Pastor. Of course, I ask God all the time for what I want. James says you don't have it because you don't ask God. Well, how many of you have asked God millions of times for things? I have. And I say, well, where is it? Why don't I get it? And why is not getting from God what I wanted so <clears throat> angry to me? And we secretly complain in the secret place of our hearts, and we say these little thoughts like, come on, God, do something for me. Please give me what I want. 
This is a true story, and I have it saved. I have it recorded. This is one person years ago uh, I met, and you know, sometimes you get played. I'm, I'm a little bit smarter than I was. I met this one person, and they were like, I really want to know about God and Bible, and I spent so much time, and I met with them and taught them things, and, and they were having problems in their lives, and I was, the answers, you know, I can't pay this, by the way, I can't pay this bill, and I have a problem here, problem there, and I was giving them, you know, trust God, and this is what you need to do. One day, and it really knocked me over, they got so mad at me, and they sent me a message. They said, Pastor Scott, I just want money. I just want money. What he really wanted was money. And he played me with this false desire to know God and to love God. And then he slipped in, you know, I'm struggling with this thing and I can't pay this. And man, I need, uh, yeah, you need a thousand dollars. And every time he'd ask for it, I, you know, I'd always give him a scriptural answer until it ticked him off so much. He basically said, stop it. I don't care about God. I never did. I want nothing to do with God. What I want is for you to give me money. And do we ever do that with God? When we're really in a bad way, God, God, okay, I know all the gods, I love you, but at the end of the day, this is my problem. And I need it fixed today. And what does God say? Oh, so that's what it's been about all this while. You never did really want me, did you? And we come to this paradox, people, going to blow your mind today. Yeah, I probably should end. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much time, I don't know. <laughs> How many people want me to end now? No. You wouldn't say it because you look bad, right? <laughs> oh, you one of those. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't? God want me happy. Right? Doesn't God want me happy? Yet that question is answered in verse 3. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your whole motive is wrong. You only want what will give you pleasure. And here it is, people. Here is the elephant in the room. That's the big term today. There's an elephant in the room. It's the rock in the middle of the road that you can't go around. Because we do ask, well, but really, isn't it about me getting what I want? Isn't that what God is here for? So I can have pleasure People, this is the most misunderstood, falsely perverted thing taught in every religion and philosophy in the entire planet since time began. Because I have a, an answer you're not going to like. The answer is no. At least not a reason to live for. Because the question then is, before I can gain anything from God, is this. Is God here for me, or am I here for God? I tell you, most churches don't really teach that properly. Well, what's the best way to find the solution? Don't listen to me. Let's see what the Word of God says. What does the Creator say? about this. And you know what? God is not concerned about your opinion. Remember that old thing. God is not concerned about your opinion of one plus one, what it equals. But which why I think it should be this. It's 2023, you know, so it's a new way. You know, God says, I don't care what you think about it. I'm going to tell you what it is. Because one plus one equals two. That's just the way it is. So what is God's thing? Gonna, I know we're going to run late. We've got to. It's the most important thing you're ever going to hear. We've got to do this. And I'm going to go through these scriptures because I've been collecting them for years. And when I first found it out, it blew my mind. And I've told you guys already 
about that sermon I heard from Paris Reedhead, Ten Shekels in a Shirt. I give it to people, no one seems to get it, but it blew my mind because this is what I found. Hebrews 13, 21. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he that blots out thy transgressions for my own sake. God speaking. I blot out your sins for my own sake. Psalm 23, 3. 23rd Psalm, right? We love that Psalm. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Revelation 4, 11. I always like that. It's an easy one because 411 is a good rear end gear ratio. Okay? So I always know 411, okay, if you know cars. Revelation 411. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. Why? For thy pleasure they are and were created. Psalm 8017, let thy hand be upon the men of thy right hand, upon the Son of Man, who thou madest strong for thyself. Romans 11:36, for of him and through him and to him are all things, Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 11:6, New Living Translation. So you see, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that he is God and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Psalm 103, 21. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Isaiah 43, 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. This is an amazing one. Proverbs 16, 4. Wow. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Another study to explain that. Isaiah 43, 7. For everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. I have made him. Last, I have tons of these, but because of time, Psalm 29, 1, a Psalm of David. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So, people, we got something going on here, okay? Because right here, this is a game changer. This is a game changer. Because if we never understood this, we have gotten God backwards for years. The whole thing is turned upside down. Meaning, we need to do, the big word today is reset. Well, we need a big spiritual reset. Because the good news here, people, is good news here. When we get our minds reset and go in the right direction, God does begin to do things in our life but not until we get this right. And this is why James says in verse 4, and when ye do ask, you don't get it because your whole motive is wrong. You want only what gives you pleasure, which brings us to the next thing, which I don't like. But James says it anyway to the people of his day who are having the same struggle. He really says some horrible things. You adulteresses, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, that if your aim is to enjoy this world, you can't be a friend of God. And people, I got a problem with that. Because I have a big yikes here. It's a big yikes moment. Because I do want to be loved by the world. I want to gain all the world has. I'm being honest with you. But 
But now it seems that if I want the blessings from God, then I have to change the way I think about looking at things in the world. Meaning today, you and I have a choice to make. My old ways, if you choose your own ways, everything for your pleasure, expect the same old results. How is that worth living for me? Or you could do something crazy here and live God's ways and expect new, exciting results that will blow your mind. So what is it going to be? What's it going to be? Verse 5. What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the Holy Spirit, whom God has placed within us, jealously longs for us to be faithful? God is jealous of our love for everything else, including ourselves, instead of him. And he's not in sin by doing that, because he deserves it, because he made us. He gives us more and more strength to stand against such evil desires. He gives us a way to live his way. He does. God sets, and he reminds us, God sets himself against the proud, but he shows favor. Boy, I want God's favor. I had the world's favor. It's fleeting. It's corrupted. It's a scam. Because everybody's trying to play me to get what they want, right? Like they're trying to play you to get what you want or get something from you. So the question remains, where is all the problems of our life coming from? Where is all the problems of this world coming from? Could it be that we're looking at life from a completely wrong perspective? And the choice now really becomes, and you and I have to decide, sometimes every day we have to decide this, my will or God's will, thy kingdom come, how many people say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done? I don't know if that's it. We say it all the time, the Lord's Prayer. Well, what is it? Thy kingdom come or your kingdom come? What is it? It's a tough one, people. Really, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Because only one choice brings massive blessings in your life. The only way you're going to have rest and peace and guidance for your soul. So you must choose wisely. But I want to close with a happy word. In, in Psalm 112, verse 1, check this out. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man. How many times do we see this? Blessed is the man. Because isn't this what we want? Happy is the person that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. What's the result? His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Not necessarily you're going to be a millionaire, but what you need, you'll have an abundance of to serve God. And his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. Light bulbs go off. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. And I'm just going to have the time to say, you can read on your own, but verse 7 he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. You get God right, you will not be afraid of anything. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. Don't you say, I would say, God, I wish I could live with not being afraid anymore. Because I'm always afraid of something. I get, I get past that. It's something new to be afraid of every day. Until he sees his desire upon his enemies. It's all what we want, people. Now, next week, James is going to tell us, how do we accomplish that? Because I tell you one thing, changing that mindset, it's hard. Because I realize I love me. As much as I hate me, it's kind of like a, a dichotomy. I hate myself as much as I love myself. I can't stand who I am, but I think I'm pretty darn good at the same time. <laughs> so that's why I walk around all day going, oh, this, my mind is at war. I can't even think. But God says, well, I'm glad you're beginning to think a little bit, because you might be on to something here. 
Next week, as we read verses 7 through 17, God says how we might even accomplish this new reset. Because we need to be reset. Right? Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, wow, Lord. You surely knew what you were doing when you said, teach through the book of James. And I said, sure, that's got to be an easy book to teach through. Going to be really nice, fluffy stuff. Boy, it sure wasn't nice, fluffy stuff. It was cutting, brutal, but ultimately truth revealing because it has been exposing so much. But I'm glad it has. I'm glad the x-rays came back and they found out where the problem is. So now the surgeon can go in and remove it. But if I don't lay still for the x-ray, I can't find the issue. And if we can't find the issue, you, God, our spiritual heart surgeon, can't remove the damage. And make us go back out and run and live the life we were deemed to live. Oh, help us to know this, Lord. Blessings and honor and peace lie before us, just out of reach, if we can just get this right. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's stand.